viewers, once again, a very good evening to you. My name is Frankie Fernandez, and I welcome to our program, Ghazali. I'm based in Melbourne. My guest is in lovely Goa. Now, I'm pretty sure you are all aware that we've got roughly about 12 museums in Goa. That's right, 12 museums, okay? There's one more that's coming up and that's entirely a different one. One with a different kind, different nature. And the man behind this museum joins me from Goa. Sebastian Almeida, good evening to you. Good evening, Frankie. Nice to be on. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Uh, to start off with, how many guitars do you have? Uh, right now, I have uh, a collection of uh, 82 guitars. Okay. Viewers, 82 guitars and still more to come. And that's where our 13th museum in Goa will be of. A museum of guitars. Incredible, incredible, Sebastian. Now, where did this idea all come up of a guitar? I, I can understand people have got different hobbies, collecting stamps, collecting coins, collecting um, uh, motorbikes or vehicles. Where did a collection of guitars begin? Uh, very long story. Binang uh, began maybe about 30 years ago. Uh, never could afford to buy a guitar. And the first one that uh, was uh, given to me was uh, through my then girlfriend. So she's now my wife and uh, she gave me my first guitar. And uh, with that, I could never sell. It wasn't uh, the best guitar, but slowly I kept on uh, getting a better guitar and getting into more shows and getting another guitar. So it finally, uh, I, I could never sell uh, the guitars. It would always be like, okay, this is has sentimental value. These are the hard times I went through with this guitar. And these are the hard times I went through with another guitar. And this is a guitar that let me down on stage or uh, whatever. There's always been a reason to hold on to them. So down the line, uh, within about uh, five uh, to eight years, I suddenly realized that about 12 guitars, not the best guitars, no, not uh, any fancy guitars, but they were my guitars. So, and I looked after them and I loved them and they were, they were like a total passion to me. And uh, that's really how the collection uh, got bigger and bigger. Then I had to sell some guitars to buy a better guitar because of the cost of like maybe three guitars was equal to one guitar that I really like to have. So I did have uh, to sell some guitars. I did go back many years later and try to buy them again at a hefty price at that because the guys then knew that I was collecting. But I still uh, managed to get a few guitars back. But it, it's been a collection over nearly 30 years. Now, now, a guitar is a guitar. How many different types of guitars do you have? Okay, I've got uh, quite a number of uh, guitars and makes. I love, I love the Fender Strats basically because I love country music. And in most of uh, country music, uh, soft rock as well, it's the Strat or the Fender Telecaster that's used. Then you got into uh, Ibanez, which is more of a rock uh, guitar, but which come with beautiful shapes and beautiful combinations. And then uh, you got the Les Paul, which is uh, easily one of the best uh, guitars in the world. And uh, yeah, they're rock guitars. So over a period of time, I kept on collecting guitars. And then some of, some of the guitars are really expensive to own, especially if you're not going to use them and just keeping them as a collection. So I'd buy a lower end guitar or guitar made by another, like a copy of the guitar. So the original is Gibson and Epiphone makes or Court makes uh, the same guitars. So I'd buy those guitars to have them in my collection. And uh, slowly, I mean, uh, one, one guitar at a time, one guitar at a time, the collection grew. At one stage, I had about uh, 71 guitars and uh, 62 were 
in this play and uh, the room caught fire and I lost 62 guitars in one hour. But I was left with the other few guitars that I've used for shows because those guitars would be in the practice room. Uh, but I had a number of friends that came uh, forward and gave me their guitars and said, Sabi, you got to start your collection again. This was all in August 2018. And in that time from August 2018 till today is when I built this new collection now. Now, 2018, that would have been a big tragedy for you, a collection of uh, all, over, over almost uh, three years. decades. Yeah. Just gone down the drain, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and where did you start off from there? Oh, then, then it was uh, nothing. I didn't want to deal with, again, uh, the place where the room that caught fire was uh, built all out of wood. I had wooden flooring, I had wooden paneling. There was glass. So it was like a humidor where they sell cigars because the climate in Goa is not conducive to storing guitars. So I actually had to make a room that way. And being all wood, it was like my office, basically. So I had all the documents of the house. I had all the documents of the vehicles. I had a coin collection as well from British uh, Africa, British India. And all of that, all of the collections and everything was lost. So it was devastating. And I didn't, I didn't even want to start any collection again. It was like, OK, someone telling you, you don't need to have a collection. Yeah, and uh, that's what I st stood back. But then a few friends uh, came in. Uh, the first was uh, Dr. Gregory and Soraya, who had a guitar that wasn't used. And he comes to me and says, Savvy, I got this guitar and it's still a virgin guitar. So, so what do you mean by a virgin guitar? So he's saying it's a guitar that was bought for my daughter. She didn't use it. My second daughter didn't use it. So it's still immaculate. You might as well take it. And at least I know with you, it will get used. So he gave me the first guitar. And uh, my brother-in-law from South Africa bought me a beautiful, unique guitar made out of an oil can. And he sent it all the way from Cape Town for me. So Robert and Susan sent me my second guitar. Ashwin, another friend, uh, sent, uh, gave me his guitar in ovation. Alex, at one stage, was a drummer with the band I play with. He gave me a guitar. And uh, Rui and Salome, some friends of us from Portugal, they gave me one guitar as well. So with those five guitars, they said, all of them had the same message, start your collection again, go out and do it. And with that, I said, let me go ahead. A lot of support from the family, of course, the wife and the daughters really, really gave me a lot of support to go ahead and do it. It didn't affect me at that time when the fire went on. It was so unreal, I just couldn't believe because I had guitars that were autographed. I had about 35 out of those guitars that were autographed. People like oh. uh, Don Williams, Johnny Lee, Tanya Tucker, Bellamy Brothers, uh, Keith Urban, Les Paul himself. Uh, I had one guitar that was uh, the first Bellamy Brothers autographed guitar that I had that was given to me by Sean, a close friend of mine who was with me in Oman as well, in Muscat. And he just came out of the blues and said, Savvy, you're such a country fan. Here's this guitar for you. And all, all of that, uh, all of it, uh, it, was, it was just unbelievable. Well, I've been told that you still have some of the remains of the guitar that were, uh, that were damaged during the fire, isn't it? Yes. Uh, what I did is uh, at the time of the fire, I couldn't uh, chuck all the guitars away. I, I just couldn't because I have so many memories with those guitars. I know I have a nine string uh, Ibanez uh, lead guitar that is the only one of its kind in India. And even right now in its burnt condition, it's still the only nine string uh, guitar in uh, India. And uh, just getting rid of those memories wasn't enough. I needed to see them. I needed uh, to look at them. I didn't know what I was going to do, but two years ago, all the messages that I got, uh, the heartwarming messages of support from a lot of the fraternity from the music industry, as well as friends, colleagues, family members, I kept each and every clipping of each and every message. And I kept each and every uh, piece of uh, guitar that I could get, but I kept them all. And uh, I didn't know I was going to do this collection again at the time. 
and the remaining debris I chucked into this uh, one area of the of the compound, and it's on that area where I threw all the debris that I built this uh, guitar room or the guitar collection that you see around you. All right. So now, it has a lot. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. It has a lot of sentimental uh, value. I, it's very emotional. And in fact, uh, when I brought the burnt uh, guitars and the burnt equipment out again, I wanted to make a table like an aquarium. And uh, I sat down with uh, my right hand man, so to say, Majid Bhatt. And uh, he's from Kashmir, did a lot of work with glass, knows the, how to handle glass. And he helped me design this unique, one of its kind uh, table that I put in everything that was burnt. That could be salvaged. All right, that, that's pretty interesting. Now, your museum is not only the only one in Goa, but the only one in the whole of India, isn't it? Uh, in more than a museum, it's a collection. A museum is like anybody can uh, walk in and go and see if you have a ticket entry, whatever. Uh, this is more of my own personal connection. I'm very emotional about uh, the place. I'm very emotional about the guitars. I'm very emotional about uh, everything that's happened and transpired. I couldn't uh, make money over it. So, I mean, if there's someone, uh, frankly say, you want to come and see it and you don't know me or you know someone uh, that knows me, you'd ask, uh, hey, you know, Sabi, I want to go and see the collection. Uh, and it's, it's always dedicated to all the guitarists, especially from Goa. Yeah, because I know how difficult it was for me to build up and get equipment and start it. So today, yes, I dedicate it to all of the uh, Goan uh, guitarists and the mus musician fraternity. But yeah, you can come in and uh, see the guitars anytime. Just have to give me a call so that I'm there and I take you around. It's not something that you can come in and you can walk around and you walk out. It's not uh, that at all. So you come in, you sit down, you digest the place. You absorb the place. There's so much to see. There's so much to understand. You have a cup of tea or have a beer or whatever. You sit down, have a drink, uh, chill out, and you soak in the place. So it's actually uh, something that you absorb. That, that's so interesting. Uh, now, your music, okay, you, you grew, grew up as a musician who moved from East Africa uh, into Goa, okay? Now, Tell us a little bit about your music uh, when you came into Goa. Okay, I came into uh, Goa when I was uh, pretty young. I was still in uh, school. And then uh, I went to Bosco's, Don Bosco's. Is where I was in Sharda Mandi first for a couple of years. And then I was in Don Bosco's, which actually pulled out my musical talent. So I would act in plays, we'd go for singing competitions. And then uh, Brother Joe Braganza at the time, he's now a priest, he recognized the talent in me and said, Sabi, you got to play the drums or get into the music scene. So I actually started off playing drums. But I couldn't see anybody. I couldn't interact with the crowd with those big symbols in front of me. So I dumped the drums and I learned to play the guitar in one week. And I was on stage uh, playing and I never looked back from the seventh standard onwards. So it's been a beautiful uh, journey and uh, owe it a lot to the Salesian community of Don Bosco. Now in the guitar collection of yours, which is the prized possession? Wow. The prize possession is burnt. It wasn't even an expensive guitar, but it was the first guitar that Angela gave me. And uh, yeah, I love the guitar. I really love the guitar, but it's no more. I don't even have the ashes of it because it just burnt off completely. Uh, right now, commercially, I've got a few Les Paul. I got the 120th anniversary uh, Les Paul as well. But like I said, I'm a country uh, guitar player and uh, country musicians normally use the Stratocaster and the Telecaster, which is why I bought uh, this guitar. If you can see, it's a Stratocaster that's uh, made and powered by Roland, the keyboard people. Okay. What Roland did is that they put a pickup in the guitar, a Roland pickup, and it's got some 
selectors on the guitar that are additional, which actually make it a Telecaster, a Stratocaster, a 12 string guitar, all simulated on one guitar. I don't need a guitar effects uh, pedal. I don't need nothing. I just need the guitar and I can get all of these uh, tones on the guitar, different sounding. So it's beautiful. I love the guitar and I uh, played a lot as well. One thing that I noticed was the name of Bellamy Brothers comes quite often in a conversation. And I'm told that you've got a corner that's entirely dedicated for the Bellamy Brothers. Tell us something about that. Okay, from, uh, I mean, I grew up on Bellamy Brothers. Mom and dad loved Bellamy Brothers, Charlie Fry, Don Williams. So country music was in. But Bellamy Brothers gave it a little different uh, kick altogether. And uh, all through my uh, school days when I was playing and college days when we started dating, I'd used the songs of Bellamy Brothers to hit on girls. So it all started there. Yeah, they were part of my love life. And uh, yeah, their lyrics are fantastic. I love their lyrics. Uh, today, I'm happy to say that uh, David Bellamy, I mean, all of the guys from Bellamy Brothers, including the band, are all close friends. We communicate uh, with each other. In fact, uh, I sent David Bellamy the wall that I made for the Bellamy Brothers. And David himself posted it on uh, Facebook. So I didn't post it on Facebook, but David Bellamy posted it on Facebook and said, our friend from uh, India has this collection and he's put up this wall. So it's a, big, uh, it's a big pride. I've been to see them about seven times now. And each time I go, I get uh, something or the other signed by them. Now I can understand you've been such a big fan of, of the Bellamy brothers. Now, one thing that I wanted to ask you was, following up with Goa music, no doubt you've got this huge collection of guitars, okay? Coming to Goa and the Goan musicians, your museum is going to be a big uh, impression, for, especially for the, for the music lovers, all right? Yeah, I uh, it's uh, unfortunately the guitar collection uh, came up during the COVID and uh, July 16th was my birthday and uh, 10 days before that my daughters and my wife came up and said Sabi you're just moping around the house let's work on the collection and be put it up you I had all the guitars that I'd already started picking up and uh, we worked day and night for 10 days. And again, Majid, but very important in assisting because he said, sir, we won't get anybody in, no outsiders because of COVID. He's saying, I will make sure that I will get everything done. So from the painting to the welding, to the framing, everything we had and we did ourselves in-house and we put up the collection. Uh, as a result, not many musicians have had the opportunity to come by. A few have, uh, we have a nice uh, clique of uh, Africander musicians. Now Africanders, uh, or we call ourselves Wana Muziki, is uh, a group that was formed by Sigmund, and uh, who's a fantastic performer himself. And uh, we decided to get all the East African musicians from Goa into one group. So we've got guys like Francis in uh, New York and Canada, Salus in Melbourne, loads of guys, Celso from Dubai, besides Brian Bones and Alan Abrio, uh, Kevin Mendes, Laurie Pires from Goa. And uh, they've all been here. I'm so happy to say that uh, Marino, another guy from uh, Mapsa, all of them have been here, have seen the guitar collections. We had a nice jam session uh, a week back and uh, just to have fun and uh, keep in touch with everybody. But it's been slow, it's been difficult, and I'm sure a few people will uh, come by every now and then. I mean, every week I have someone coming, Frankie. That way I have uh, people coming by to see. There is one uh, boy that came in that's uh, manufacturing his own guitar. He's making a guitar made in Goa. So when I saw his uh, note I wrote to him, and uh, he said, Sammy, I want to come and see your collection as well. So he came by and uh, we had a nice uh, 
evening together. But it's been uh, awesome. Everybody's really happy. Everybody's blown. Recently, we had Edwin as well, who came down, who's, uh, who went around, and he's a crazy guitarist. Like, he's one of the guitar gods of uh, Goa, based in Delhi. But he had the opportunity to come down, and uh, he's seen the guitar collection and went crazy about it. Chris, uh, Chris, uh, Chris Bismarck as well was down, and he came in to see the collection. He loved it as well. So I've had, I've had uh, a number of guys that have uh, come in. But it'll take some time, I guess. And uh, as uh, I'm, a, I'm a little bit concerned about COVID and uh, the mm -hmm. uh, having getting sick and having a problem for me as well as any of the visitors. So I do it in ones and twos if someone's coming and we have a chat and go through the collection. Now, what I've, what I've noticed is that it's not only the guitar collection, but you also have a set of other music instruments uh, in your museum, isn't it? Yeah, I've, uh, I've always uh, believed in uh, collecting equipment and uh, the equipment that I collect normally, instrument wise, is normally from uh, someone who's bought a, a guitar maybe or bought a keyboard and uh, today his kids don't want to play it or it's just lying down and he's just fed up, he's collecting dust. So I would look at picking up uh, equipment like that. Then there are a lot of people who have scrap uh, equipment that's just dumped in the storeroom, whatever, like a broken saxophone or unplayable trumpet. Then I'll pick up that equipment and I'll make lampshades and I'll make uh, different uh, things out of the equipment. So the music room, I, I have a baby grand piano. I got a, about three or four drum sets uh, that I picked up. So down the line, and what happens with the band also, it, uh, I have a band smooth and uh, we've got a beautiful bunch of musicians, but it gets difficult to come for practice and carry your keyboard or carry your guitars, especially during the rains. So this way I have the equipment, you just walk in and uh, yeah, we practice, have a cup of tea, have some laughs, and it's like a small family. So it works all around. Now, what I've realized is that by profession, you're not a musician. You travel, you travel uh, to the Middle East quite often, isn't it? No, I am a musician. I've been a musician. I've been a guitar player uh, for up to 30 odd years. Yeah? And I have a business in Oman. All right. So I travel to Oman on business, but uh, ever since the family moved back to Oman, uh, I started spending more time uh, in Goa, at least moved back to Goa. So I spent a lot of time in Goa, and then I said, for kicks, why don't I start playing again? I used to play in Oman. Uh, we played with two bands. One was with uh, Domingo Scudino, who used to play with Beat 4. He was their drummer with Remo, yes. Ali Chandra. Yeah, and uh, he was a drummer there, and I latched on to Domingo. We call him fondly Tony. And we had a band, and then down the line, uh, formed another band uh, with another bunch of beautiful guys, Rocky from Naveli, Croydon Menezes from Divar, and Clifford from Saligao, and uh, Shyline, uh, the girl singer from Miramar. And we were a band for a long time, long, long time. I remember coming to Goa and playing one show and then flying down to Oman and playing another show there. So it was like, uh, but fun, loads, loads of fun. Uh, one thing that I can tell you, at the end of this interview, when it's broadcast, definitely you'll have many more people coming and asking you about this uh, guitar muse museum. Uh, Sebi, thank you very much for your time. I know, I know it's a labor of love. There's a lot of effort that you put into it, especially after what you've gone through back in the 2018. And come up with, again, a massive collection is no ordinary task, but you've done it extremely well. And mind you, this is supposed to be uh, the only guitar museum in the whole of India. Hats off to you. Hats off to you, Sally. Thank, thank you very much, Frank. It's been nice uh, talking to you and uh, pouring my soul out, so to say. Uh, it, it's, it's a fantastic experience. I'm sure our, our viewers uh, from across the globe would definitely once in Goa make it a point to visit your museum and take maximum interest in, in your collection. Absolutely. Everybody is welcome. Everybody. 
Thank you very much, Sammy. Thank you once Thank again. You.